about this. Looking forward to hanging out with the man. I don't know how people get all these notifications out. You know? It's a lot. It's a lot. There's probably somebody probably somebody sitting next to you, you know, like just typing like nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Your personal assistant, just like, you know, sending everything out because yeah, it's it's a lot, it's a lot to keep up with. I mean, if you don't do it, then you're in trouble, you know? Yeah, I mean, we want to serve our audience and, you know, they, they're busy, so they have to know, you know, Everybody when and where busy. people forget and, you know, just notifications really help. So, yep. a lot of work. Max Keller, greetings, my friend. Greetings, Roundup. Hey, what's happening? Roundup family. I know. I don't even know. Yeah, there we go. Roundup family, greetings. Greetings. Thank you for joining us. Let me get on Max's beautiful smile here. Oh, yeah. There it is, baby. Oh, yeah. I paid for that. That's good. Mine was expensive. <laughs> yeah. Roundup family. Greetings. It's Chris Haskins. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Doing that, I get to hang out with some winners, some very, very innovative gentlemen, entrepreneurs like Max Keller. How you doing, my brother? I'm feeling really good. It's a beautiful day. Blessed to wake up and just looking forward to pouring a lot of, you know, wisdom and knowledge into the audience and, um, you know, just, you know, sharing, sharing what I know and then, um, you know, letting them run with it. Nice. Nice. Roundupers. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget, hit that like button below down there and share this content with anybody else you think that would that could possibly benefit from this max i've been thinking matter of fact i was in the bed last night thinking like about that uh the checklist that you have i'm just honored to be able to go for it give us real quick a background on you for my roundupers that don't know who you are max yeah sure well hey welcome everybody um we, we hope you're in for a treat i'm max keller a real estate investor um started out doing you know business jobs and then i um, got into education i was a teacher math teacher for you know, seven years, wanted to make more income, wanted to improve, you know, my family's life, thought I was actually just going to do real estate really part time. And it just sort of took over, you know, I think it was God speaking to me. Um, I was, you know, finally listening and um, started doing real estate about three year period flipped uh, over 100 houses in Dallas, Fort Worth, single family, then um, started, uh, you know, writing books, and then uh, got into mobile home investing. And now, yeah, I do a lot of things and, um, you know, I, I serve, I mean, I, I'm a teacher, you know, I got my master's in teaching and that was really, you know, where my heart was. And it was, it was tough. Actually, that was the hardest part of getting into real estate. The money was great. Um, and if people here are listening, they haven't experienced the money, stay tuned. Cause we're going to show you how to do that. I'm going to just, you know, share with you a lot of like fast tracks as far as time and, you know, wisdom that I've gained from the people that I've been around to save you a lot of time. But, yeah, it's just so now I'm fortunate that I'm in a position where I can share a lot of knowledge with people through books, through, you know, this teaching session that we're doing. And um, there's just so many things, but it's, you know, it's good to be here. Nice. Yeah. So today, what do you have? Do you have a, you know, yeah, you got to tell them what you're going to talk what, Tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them what are we going to talk about? And then we're going to get into it. What if you could just give us an overview of what today's about, Max? Today's the three reasons why people are not hitting their cash flow goals. You know, I've gone, I've, I've felt like I've circumvented the globe four times in those last four years. Cause here's the deal guys. What's amazing about being into real estate is you can use the extra money when you're flipping houses to, you know, buy stuff and get all the things you wanted, but those are fleeting, you know, like the best decision. I haven't always made perfect decisions. Um, I don't know everything. Um, I'm just going to share with you today what I know. And it's the biggest mistakes that I see over and over again, people make, you know, I used the money that I made from flipping houses to get into masterminds, to build really strong relationships with people who um, are way, way ahead of me. And I've taken that wisdom and applied it. So I'm going to show you first what that wisdom is. I think you're going to see some nuggets today that you've never seen before. That's the feedback I've gotten. You know, when I've taught people this and then I'm going to show you like specifically how you can implement it, you know, in less than 60 minutes. So this is not this is not theory. This is stuff that I'm doing every day. This is how I've been doubling my income pretty much every year for the last four years. And I'm just going to wow. I'm going to show you these 10 questions. And then if you choose to um, use them, you're going to you're going to see some benefit. And if you don't, you know, then I'm not sure why. 
<laughs> what even with the, when we went over it last week, I'm just think, looking at the questions, and I'm like a fan. I just love questions, Max. Like when I'm negotiating with, uh, just in general, you know, mm -hmm. he who controls. Let me ask you: He who controls the questions? Do you think that they control the conversation? In a way, yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to empower other people to share, and you learn a lot more from listening. That's and true. um, and it's really it's all about you know. Albert Einstein said this. He said that if he had 60 minutes to solve a problem, he would invest, not spend 59 minutes trying to figure out what were the most important questions he needs to be asking himself, and then one minute to actually solve the problem. So that's that's really like opposite the way a lot of people think, but that's what we're going to be teaching you today. So this is really... This is like really, really different stuff that you're not going to hear in a lot of places. And then if you take it and run with it, like you said, Chris, you will have the keys to the castle because you'll understand how important questions are. So I agree 100%. Well, Dan Kennedy is like, he who controls one of the books, he who controls the questions controls the negotiation. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's do this, my friend. Where, where do we get started? You give me some direction. Yeah, okay, good. Well, why not share my screen with you? And so that okay. way everybody who's watching can kind of follow along. Take yeah. some notes. So I'm going to do that right now. And then, um, you know, we'll get our goal is to get through, you know, this content in about 25, 30 minutes so okay. that you can um, so that you can ask some questions at the end. And then we've got some some bonuses, some I mean, hundreds of dollars worth of bonuses that we're giving away for free. So you can just um, if you stay on till the end, you'll get access to those. And then if you don't, then you'll miss out. Got to stay to the end roundup family. He's got some goodies. I've already seen him. Some unbelievable stuff. And you got to know who this guy is, who we're dealing with here. Just a regular guy. That's me and my friend, Robert. If y'all know him, this was a really cool moment. I, I won the um, uh, Industry Innovator of the Year Award for my book and workbook. I licensed it to people all over the country. And it was really kind of a cool Zen moment because I remember 14 years ago standing in line to get Robert's book for like two hours at Barnes & Noble. Um, and it was really cool to meet him. And then, you know, yeah, I, I had no idea that I would be a full-time real estate investor and where it all went. And so when I got this award at this, you know, convention, there were about 800 people there and I went and, you know, talked to him. I got my picture with him and, and he was wow. like, you know, can I see your book? And I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. Like I remember standing in line for his book. Now he's asking for mine. So wow. you know, I just want to, I just want to let everybody know who's listening. Like you, you cannot imagine, you know, what's possible and, 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 and don't imagine what's not possible. You never know. So really, really dream big. And I'm going to show you some tools where you can take your dreams and actually, you know, put them into action and start making money. And then, you know, I hope that somebody in here is getting awards and hanging out with Robert. You know, he's really yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. So is that cool, Chris? If I just kind of uh, go through the content with folks and they can take yeah. some notes. Hit it. Yeah. Let's do it. You rock. Cool. All right. Cool. Right on. Well, let's do this, everybody. So so here's the three reasons why people miss their goals. Are these the only three? No. Are these three of the really biggest ones? Yes. Do you want to write these down? Absolutely. Can you write down every word? No. Just write down the most important stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's the teacher max coming out, right? Okay. So number one worst answer that you can give when somebody is giving you an opportunity, I'm going to show you what that is. And, and I'll tell you the worst one is maybe. Maybe it's not happening. OK, mm -hmm. maybe is 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 convoluting your brain with all these things that you could be doing, but you're not sure you're half committing to things and you're just not going to hit your goals that way at all. OK, uh, another one is, you know, we're going to talk today in this class about the specific steps that I'm empowering you with these tools to avoid shiny object syndrome. I mean, how many people can relate to that? Give us a comment or, a, or you know phone in, right? If you're like, yeah, I go to a seminar and I hear about something really awesome, you know, whether it's like um, apartment, uh, you know, like apartment uh -huh. uh, investing. And then I'm like all in on that. Units. Yeah. And then storage units and then mobile homes mm -hmm. and, you know, all these things. And it just, it holds you back big time. So, be so much. So it's like, well, what are we going to do about that? Okay. We can obviously identify that's a problem, but what are we going to do about it? Well, I'm going to show you what to do with that. OK, now I'm moving around a lot so you can't see me. Right. Because I don't want to look like crazy. So you can just uh -huh. see my screen. OK, I just got your screen. I'll leave you off for sure. now. Make sure I want to serve everybody. And then five questions you need to ask yourself. I'm actually going to show you 10. OK, that you need to ask yourself before saying yes to any opportunity. And I'm going to give you uh, this tool at the end that you can download. And it's pretty much going to be where you can carry it around 
And if you put these questions and answer them on every opportunity, you're going to have incredible clarity on what you should be, um, you know, doing and what you should not be doing. Heck, I mean, you can use it for our next webinar. If you yeah. get a better offer when, when we, if we do this again, we're not going to do this one. This is one time only, but if we do some different content down the road, mm -hmm. I want you to take this tool and go, okay, I can go to this webinar and then answer all the questions and then, and then answer the questions for the other opportunities that you have and see which one is better. I mean, it's yeah. really, it's really simple what I'm going to teach you all today, That's but simple things are rarely done consistently. And, um, you know, I mean, I learned this, I mean, this was like a combination of a lot of things. I've never actually seen this before anywhere else. And what I've learned, you know, when I, what I've learned, Chris, and what I want to share with everybody who's listening is, is that as folks move up in the pyramid of life and the economic pyramid, you actually get, you know, you get more opportunities kind of thrown in front of you and really, really successful people. They have to, they have to be amazing at, quickly identifying what the, the best opportunities are, not good opportunities, but the best ones and saying no to all the other ones. So if, if you never really lived your life like that, this is going to be kind of a new concept. And so just, just take it and run with it. Gotcha. Okay. So a little bit about me, I don't want to go on and on, but just to give some context, why you should even be listening. So I started save your home buyers three, four years ago and that span flipped over a hundred homes um, I wanted to communicate to my audience and most of my homeowners, I was buying single family residential houses, you know, $200,000 ARV kind of houses. I'd buy them for a hundred, put 50 into them. And I'd be, you know, I'd be all into the property, 150,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. I'd sell it for 200, you know, just kind of your normal first, you know, first base, second base kind of deal. Right. right. So I did those. I started writing books. My best customers were seniors. They needed a lot of help. I took, all my grandma helped raise me. So I just love seniors and I wanted to get more of them and help more of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of shysters out there ripping them off. And it made me mad because I was thinking, well, you know, what if they're, you know, they're ripping off people like my grandma and it's, and that sucks. Yeah. So I was like, how can I protect these people? I can't be in everybody's living room. So I just took all the information and knowledge I knew and wrote it in a book and I start sharing it with seniors and they start sharing it with their adult children then I start, then people in the city started finding out about it and they wanted me to share it and put on these big events. And then I started licensing the book out to people all over the nation and they use it uh, for lead generation. So that's been really cool. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I wrote the net profit workbook, which we're going to um, give a link to people who stay on at the end um, to get a copy of that for free. And that's $97 on Amazon and it's doing great. <coughs> and we're doing one of the, bless you. We're doing yeah. one of the activities from the uh, workbook today. So, yes. and then I, I co-own Mobile Vested with my partner, Glenn Stromberg. And um, we we teach people how to do investing in mobile homes. I do consulting and I mean, I do some other things too. That's all I could fit on there. But okay. I don't know, it's a blessed life. And I just feel like the more I can share and teach, um, you know, that that's what my purpose is. So that's, that's kind of why we're here today. Gotcha. Cool. All right. So I want, you know, like you said, Chris, I mean, have you been looking at this presentation? Cause you know exactly what to say. I don't think I showed it to you. Um, is you're exactly right, man. It's all about questions. Hmm. It's not about giving answers to things we only know a little bit about. It's about questions. So here's some questions for everybody listening. Okay. Was last, was, was last year, you know, it was supposed to be your best year. Was it, or did it turn out to be more of the same? So I want everybody hmm. listening to really reflect on that and think about what happened last year. Right now, let's like get real, like not what we're talking to people at the RIA club about or on our own, you know, YouTube channels, like get real with like where it really is. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's question number one. Question number two, are people listening here? Do they feel like they're jumping from one opportunity to the next? Um, and, you know, you're eventually you're going to get to where you want to be, but it's just like, you know, you need, it, you're just not sure what opportunity to pick. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. You know, some people like, I mean, there is a process, like there's nothing wrong with evaluating opportunities. The thing is, is how are you evaluating them? And if you're, if you're investing like six months of, of kind of half-hearted effort into each one, I mean, that's going to take a long time to figure out what you really need to be doing. Mm -hmm. I can help you do that in about 10 minutes. So wow. which one do you want to do? Two years or 10 minutes? 
10 minutes, brother. All right, that's what we're going to do. So, and then do you want to, you know, how are you going to, are, are you going to identify the best opportunities? How can you be really, really good at that? I'll give everybody listening a little secret. That is an absolute superpower. When you can figure out whether it's math, prayer, you know, you're, th- you're questioning a combination of all three. When you put all those things together and you can figure out what, what a good opportunity is, there's so many people out there, Chris, mm-hmm. where they're standing at a river bank and they're watching opportunities like float down the river right past them, but they don't know how to spot opportunities. Yeah. They don't even see it. Well, what you showed me already was like not over not only opportunities, but the highest and best ones. That's what um, you kind of opened my eyes to that. Well, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because the bottom line is, and a lot of people who poured into me and my mentors have done the same. And that's how I was able to share it with you. And we're sharing yeah. it today. Because yeah, we our, our time on the planet's really finite. Mm-hmm. You know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you know, our, our Lord and Savior, like I do, and even if you don't, I mean, your amount of time on the planet is not that long. I'm hoping mm-hmm. to get to, you know, heaven and and live on there, you know, forever. But our time on the planet's pretty short, and yeah. you don't want to waste time. Time's our most precious resource, and you hear people talk about it, but here's the part that's missing. It's like, okay, well, where are the tools that can help me really master time? Great mm-hmm. news. I've got those tools. I'm going to share them with everybody. Nice. Yep. Cool. Let's do it. So here's Warren Buffett. The difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. Hmm. That's the bottom line. If you if you go and read Snowball, there's a lot of great books on Warren Buffett. Um, if you if you look at his net worth, I think 90% of his net worth is from like eight opportunities that he said yes to. And he's been investing for like 70 years. Gotcha. So he would say yes to one really amazing thing every decade. Hmm. And he's the third or fourth richest person in the world. So don't you think that really successful people offer clues? That's what I think. And so these are some of the clues that they left. So answer the following questions. Honestly, everybody. Okay, when we're looking at an opportunity and you don't, you can write some of these down, but you don't have to. I'm going to give this to you at the end if you're staying on. If you're leaving early and playing hooky, shame on you. Um, but but let's go for it right now. Okay, does this opportunity, question number one, make more money? Does this opportunity take less of my time? You only have so much time. No, real quick, I just want to make sure I put opportunity. I feel like that needs to be I mean, from me. Yeah. Question in the quotations, Max. I mean, this could this could be anything from selling lemonade to opening up a McDonald's. I mean, could you kind of quantify opportunity for me? Yeah, great question. So it can be opportunity, it can be activity, right? So you can, <laughs> okay. you know, how I use this, how I use this tool initially was I'll tell you how this tool happened. What happened was is I started writing books, which is another superpower. It's you you do not believe the power that that you have, if you're on this call and, yeah. you're not, and you don't understand about becoming an author, oh. like, that's a superpower. Yeah. And that's what happened, Chris. I became an author and I wrote my first book and literally three months later, I had three different people that offered me equity in their companies. Mm-hmm. And these are people who've been making a million dollars a year for a long time. So like these are very, very, and I was doing great at the time, but I wasn't making a million dollars a year and for many years. And I was like, uh, really? And it's just the way they look at you so different. So I had like four opportunities that I was evaluating, but Chris, you can't do four things like all amazing. You know, if you focus that energy, you know, and you focus the ray of sunlight and you make it a laser beam instead of just like a light bulb overhead, it's just a lot more impactful. Yeah. So I had a choice. I could say yes to all four, which would have been terrible. I would have ended up being mediocre at all of them. And that's what the old Max was doing in the past. Or I could pick the very best, highest and best use. So I wrote the four opportunities on, you know, I made columns. I wrote the four opportunities across my paper. And then I started, you know, asking questions and developing this. And then over time, you know, these were the 10 questions that I landed on. And, And they all depend. It's all based. I mean, people are different. People have different things, but these are the questions that I wanted to know when we're talking about business, right? Cool. Okay. So, That's it. Gotcha. So, yeah. so like number one, you know, so I'd look at the opportunities. I'd have two opportunities next to each other. I'd say, okay, which one makes more money, right? Uh, which opportunity takes less of my time? Hmm. 
which opportunity takes less of my team's time? Uh, which opportunity has lower taxes in the long term? Because as you start making more income, taxes start getting really important. You know, a lot of people hyper focus on taxes when they have no money. And it's like, uh, you're doing it out of order. Step one is to generate a lot of active income and cash. Step two is to start building passive income and fixed assets. And then step three is how do you preserve it and pass it on and create a legacy? Gotcha. So like, let's not get too fixed. At, like everybody wants to talk about passive income. Cool. What's your active income? Because if your active income is barely making your bills, no matter what somebody tries to, what some guru tries to sell you, it's going to be challenging. The, the people I know and how I've built my passive income the fastest is by building my active income first. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. But later on, taxes is going to become more important. Um, does this include, um, you know, recurring revenue? That's so important right now. Um, if it doesn't, that, that could be a real big problem. People are paying, you want to have monthly money coming in every month without you having to, you know, do a lot to get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, contain more control of business risk. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs are so, they think all about the gains and all about the positive. You need to be spending twice as much time, you know, thinking about the business risk, the lawsuits. I mean, that that can, if you've never been sued before, which I mean, I've been blessed, I haven't, but I know people have gone through it. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare. So, you know, you have to think about that too. And then scale. You know, I, I found this to be true and, and, and y'all can write this down if you think it's valuable that the the best most world class local opportunity pales in comparison to a average national opportunity <laughs> break that down so so uh, roundupers that, that don't quite have Scale. an understanding of local to national local uh, is like if you're flipping houses in your backyard nothing wrong with that okay like it's great it's just you're going to find that it's really hard to do like 2 or 300 houses a year um just like on your own you know in one area yeah. So, but what I'm saying is, is that if you have an opportunity that can scale, you know, nationwide, it's, it's here, here's the deal right here. I'll give you an example. Chris, do you like to work out? I do every day. Okay, cool. Where do you work out? What's the name of your gym? I just go to the YMCA. YMCA. Okay. YMCA is a perfect example. So if Chris, if you own a gym and it's Chris's gym, it's a low and, and you have it just in your hometown, that's a local opportunity. And you can get people to show up. You can, you know, do advertising. You can make it an amazing place. You can have a lot of extra services. But the amount you're going to make at a local gym is just it's it's based on how many people are willing to drive. And I mean, do you think that people are willing to drive across? A, maybe they'll drive across the city to go to your gym, but probably not across the state and probably not across the whole nation. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to do that. But if it's YMCA. They have them all over, right? And they charge. So, you know, the national opportunity, if you took Chris's gym and you branded it and you franchised it out and you had these, you know, nice gyms that were a good price, they weren't the highest price, but, you know, you had some differentiators and everybody else was running these franchises, your money is going to be so much bigger mm -hmm. on a decent national opportunity, like scaling and franchising your gym than the most incredible local gym. You gotcha. Know what I'm gotcha. Okay. More right. eyeballs, you know, and yep. then does it seem more enjoyable? I threw that in. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of greedy. I want to make money, but I also want to, I want to have fun while I'm at work too. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how you can do something long-term that you hate. Like if you're listening, are you doing something right now for active income that you hate? How long can you do that? Like, yeah. you know, it's that won't work. And then the last two, or does it have more leverage? And a lot of people, when they think of leverage, they think of financial leverage, but I want to encourage you to think about time and energy also. So, you know, time leverage, you know, some businesses are more scalable and it's easier to bring people onto your team. And some, some businesses, it's just really hard. And so can you bring people onto your team to, to get time leverage? Mm -hmm. um, can you bring, you know, people on that have a different, more experienced expertise and give you all of their energy and all of their knowledge? Uh, you know, research is another one. I mean, there's so many kinds of leverage, you know, as you're building that out. So that's something you got to think about. And then of course, um, we talked about this a little bit, but now it's more just specific, not like on sales, like the business risk question, but in volatile markets, but now we're talking about legal risk. So those are the main, these are the questions I ask every time somebody presents me with a new opportunity. Gotcha. 
something that takes up my time. So let's like dig into these a little bit deeper. Sound good? Yes, sir. Real quick, Max, let me just drop in here, round up. If you're just joining us, I have to I remind myself to some people just coming in. If you're just joining us, my roundup is we're hanging out with Max Keller down there in Dallas, Fort Worth area in Texas. And he is sharing with us how he actually quantifies and actually, I guess, filters through, so to say, his new opportunities, whether it's real estate, business, marketing. And you said even you were talking about even action, too. You were saying not, not only businesses, not, not only opportunities, but just different action throughout the day. I think that was pretty sharp, Max. Well, thanks. I got it from other people. Most of my best stuff is from other people. And so it's like when you build that network, that's why the Roundup family is so crucial because, you know, everybody has the opportunity to learn from each other. And you want to, you know, you want to, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel and you want to follow a playbook that, you know, actually works. And so that's why, you know, these communities are so powerful. So if you're new and you, and you're just like checking this out, you know, definitely stay in touch with us and get connected because, you know, we're going to be having more of this content, you know, as time goes on. Nice. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I got to throw in here. My favorite things to borrow from my friends are their ideas. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Let's hit it. I love that. That's good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, how, so you can use this, you know, to make more informed decisions. You know, lo- great life is about having lots of great choices. And, and choices are amazing, but it's like, what is the best choice? Cause like you said earlier, you know, kind of the, the, the knowledge bomb that impacted you was, is we just can't be doing like a hundred things really well. Mm-hmm. And so as time progresses, things change and you change and hopefully you're growing and there's going to be new opportunities. And so this is just like a really strategic way of, you know, of, of looking at it. And what I like, I live by checklists, you know, I like checklists all my team members, you know, when we plug them into different workflows, there's a checklist that goes with each one. And it just sort of takes the, you know, there's two pieces to making decisions. It's like, okay, well, what, how am I even going to like come to a decision and then what the decision is. And so what's cool about having a checklist for the things that you do in your life is that um, number one, you can borrow your checklist from other people who are already doing it that are successful. And then the other part is, is now like, when I go to this checklist, these questions, I don't have to think about like what questions I should be asking myself. I already figured those out it's right there. So now all I have to do is just answer them. And then I get to invest my thinking time on like what we were talking about earlier. We want to spend 90% of the time, you know, thinking, right. Yep. So, and then 10% doing the action, you get way better outcomes that way. It sounds like the reverse, but just working, working, working without thinking, it doesn't make money. So this is like getting you halfway. You guys have to do the other half, which is fill your answers in and then think about it. But just makes sense to me. Like this way, I already know what the questions are. I just go through it. And then, um, and then, you know, I just think about it. And usually Chris, it's amazing. <clears throat> it's amazing. Usually when I go through this, like I thought that two opportunities were really close to each other. And usually they're not close even like by far. Shot, yeah there's so much confusion right now and so little clarity on like, what's, what is, what should we be doing right now in this moment? And if you're, if you're thinking about that all the time, just not going to make good decisions. So here's something that Grant Cordon said, he said, sometimes you need to, um, you need to eliminate good opportunities to get to the best. You need to prioritize your goals, disregard anything that's not on the top of your list. Hmm. Um, And so and so that's that's what we're talking about today. And so if you're if you're right now you're struggling and you're you're in a million different things and you're trying to figure out what direction to go to, um, you know, instead of just following the herd, you don't need to follow the herd because you're smart. You you're wise. You know you better than anybody else. So use this tool and pour answer the questions and then really think about you because all the goals are different. I made a big mistake at the beginning of my real estate career with the goals where it says right here in the sentence, prioritize your goals, Hmm. not Chris's goals. Hmm. Don't prioritize Max's goals, prioritize your goals. So that's what I want to empower everybody to do is to take this tool and put, make it, make sure that the opportunity fits your goals because they're different. And if, if we're always comparing ourselves to other people, which I made that mistake too, you're never going to be happy. You know, so just like come to these webinars, come to trainings, pour into yourself, make that investment in yourself. 
And if you're if you're just getting a little bit better than you were yesterday, that's all you need to worry about. Make sense so far? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you got it. Cool. So so nothing in business happens in a vacuum. If you know if you are thinking about if you're only answering one question at a time, you don't have a framework like this. I mean, it's going to be really, really hard to make the best decisions. So we have to take in as many different factors as possible. And I was like, well, what's a really simple way to do that? And and this is it. This is what I found. And um, and I'm going to just like teach you how to do this. So there it is. if you stay till the end, I'm going to get you a copy of this. It's downloadable and you'll get it. And um, and what it is, is you can print That's this the out. Sheet. Yeah, it's just an easy little spreadsheet. That's the sheet right there, Rounduppers. That is the gold sheet right there. When you show me that sheet, I'm like, why didn't I have this 10 years ago? I felt the same way. <laughs> oh, man, I mean, I'm really – I agree. The sheet. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, here's what I want to teach you all how to do because it doesn't come with instructions. These are the instructions right now. So okay. what I do is as I score it. So I don't know if you can see my mouse, but like – Okay. Let's yeah, just I'll put it back. Can you see my mouse? Absolutely. Cool. So like right here, opportunity one, maybe you would put like, you know, wholesaling. Okay? Yeah. And then opportunity two would be like fix and flip in my mm -hmm. local area. Right. And then maybe opportunity three is something else that I don't know what it is like rental properties. And then yeah. opportunity four is maybe, you know, building, you know, houses to New rent. Construction. Yeah. Or yeah. Whatever. So you list them all and then you answer. Now here's the key to this. This is like the only like halfway tricky part. Everything else is really simple is you you put a score one to 10 for each question. That's how I do it, okay? And so does this opportunity <clears throat> one to 10, okay? Now, here's the key. A 10, a 10 is a good score, right? So a 10 is something that's better for you. It benefits you. So let me give you an example, Chris. Mm -hmm. Does um, does wholesaling um, take up as much of um, as much time as doing a full like fix and flip rehab takes so less time less time so right here where it says take less of my time if wholesaling was our first one here you would give that a high number because it's something taking less time is something that benefits you does that but make i don't make but i make less money wholesaling too though well then we're going to factor that in right <laughs> but then that would be a lower score exactly wow but that's what we're doing is we're, we're actually evaluating all of them at the same time. And then we spit a score out at the end. And, yeah, and the power of that is you get a ton of clarity on, on all these things you haven't thought about. And then you just see what the scores total up together at the bottom and you figure it out for you. Nice. You know I mean? Nice. I mean, we can do one right now if you want. Do we have time? Well, we actually almost said 35 minutes, Max. We're going to have to get some Q and A at the end, uh -huh. but we, uh, and that's it. So here's the last part. Okay. I'll show you the last part and we'll go to Q and a. So I think everybody here that I know you guys are smart. If you're listening, you're smart. You total up the scores, right? So it's one to 10. And then at the bottom is your total score. So let's say you're doing two opportunities right now. Let's say you're doing wholesaling and you're doing fix and flip. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, okay. And let's say wholesaling gave you a score of like an 80 and fix and flip was like a 50. Mm -hmm. Well, that should send off some red flags right there that, you know, that, Maybe, maybe you need to do more wholesaling right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you write the mix is your present state. So let's say right now you're doing 50 50 wholesaling and fix and flip. So you put 50% here, 50% here. And then when you get these scores, hopefully, my, my dream for y'all is that you see these scores and it, it the light bulb goes off. And you go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this, this, that low score reflects all the pain you're feeling right now. And so then mm -hmm. you may decide, okay, I'm going to make a business decision. Instead of doing 50-50 wholesale and fix and flip, I'm going to do 90% wholesale. You put a 90% here. That's your future state. And then maybe just fix and flip like the really, really easy rehab deals. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I did this with somebody who is you know, in one of my masterminds and he's very accomplished. And when he went through that, I mean, everybody I've gone through it with, they just, they couldn't believe how different the scores ended up being, yeah. so, you know, answer truthfully. And then they also, the people I knew who were in the most pain, it was, the reason was, is because if they're doing multiple things, most of our time was spent around the things that have the lowest score. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really showed them on one piece of paper, how they need to pivot and change what they do. And they're getting results. And I am too. Nice. So that's it.
So you want to get re recurring revenue. We'll 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 table that for the next time, and we'll go deeper. We can, we're good. I don't see but so many questions. Roundupers, get your questions in the box over there. Go ahead. Uh, you can keep going, Max. You're good. Cool. Well, so here's one of the boxes that I really want everybody to dial in on is include recurring revenue. So, you know, it how here's my challenge to everybody here. How can you grow your active income and get that passive income growing at the same time? Right. I mean, how nice would it be to wake up on the first of the month? You, you know, not you know, like the song, except we're doing only only good activities here. It's real estate. We're not doing anything crazy. But how would you like to wake up? It's the first of the month and your whole bills are paid for. Right. How can we grow that passive income? And then my other thing I want to say is, is what you're doing for passive income really passive? You know, like if you're renting houses and you're doing the property management and you're getting calls at eight o'clock at night when you're trying to eat dinner with your family. Please yeah. don't get on the show and lie and tell me that's passive. That's not passive. I think it's a facade. I it think people facade. do. It's totally fake. <laughs> and so, and so, I want to create things. I'm going to show you what I did. I got with one of my mentors. I was fixing and flipping houses, just going crazy. And my coach said, "Hey, the problem with your financial statement is there's no recurring revenue. When you sell that last house, you're basically unemployed until you you're find done. another one." Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do I do? And he said, this is the magic bullet, recurring revenue. It's predictable and stable. You have more consistency in your money every month, which allows you to plan better, which is where the money's at. Mm -hmm. You have less risk. It, you can grow it bigger. You can grow it bigger on a national scale. I was like, yeah, but I fix and flip houses. How, how, how does that, how can I have recurring revenue? And good question. Well, here's an, here's a thought. I'm not saying it's the only way, but this is the first one I did. My, my mentor said, Max, do your customers get their lawns mowed? And I'm like, well, usually the houses I buy, they don't mow their yards. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> right. But I go, but yeah, a lot of the customers get their yards mowed. You know, they're supposed to, and they have a service. He's like, well, what if you introduce them to a service? Would that service pay you a referral fee? Nice. Like, yeah, but I mean, that's not a lot of money, you know? I was thinking 30, 40, 50,000 dollar, you know, flip profits. Yeah. I'm like, why are we wasting time talking about 12 bucks here and 20 bucks here and 40 bucks here? Well, I think you know why, Chris, cuz it adds up. Yeah. In a hurry. And so I started I found a really good yard service and I started referring my customers to them and I found some other things that my customers used. Turns out that my yard service was interested in getting new customers and they were willing to pay me a referral bonus every month when they mowed that person's yard. And so before I knew it, I looked up and I had a couple hundred bucks a month coming in just from just referring, you know, service providers to folks that I ended up not even buying their house or anything like that. And I was like, wow. I was like, wow. maybe there is something here, you know? Nice. So, so here's my challenge to everybody listening and you don't have questions uh, is that, you know, when somebody gives you advice and, and they're a good credible source and you're like, that person's crazy. That's normal in the thinking process. I think it is for me, but just be, just, you know, think about it a little bit, be patient with it. And 99 out of a hundred times when I think somebody gives me an idea and they're really wise and they have proven results. And it's just a matter of time before I realize how correct they were. And so, you know, just don't like wait too long to come to the same conclusion. Implement. Implement. So I already said that obviously it creates a lot of predictability in your business. There's you still, we're still talking about continuity, right? Yeah. Re recurring yes. continuity. Recurring. And so, Here's the part of the slide that's the most important is that there's different models for different businesses. <clears throat> and as part of your tools for staying on the end, I'm going to email you a list of these nine tools that I got um, from a really, really good book. And I kind of just dissected them down and gave a description and created this tool for everybody who stays on. Uh, it's a tool that I use when I'm anytime we're looking at businesses and people want monthly money. And so it's like there's there's about nine different models and ways that you can do it. And I've never heard of a business that you couldn't fit one or more of the models into it. Mm -hmm. So it, it really behooves you to look into this and start. We don't have time to, we could do a whole webinar on recurring revenue, but I want you to, um, you know, to at the end, you can <clears throat> think you can get, you can download the tools and look at it and just make the decision for yourself. But I think when you look at these nine different, these are four of the choices, there's five more, but recurring revenue for what you're already doing is an incredible way to start oh, man. 
building that Thank continuity you. in your in your budget in your life. You know, it's weird, Max. I think for me, I was uh, bred or maybe born into paying continuity, mm -hmm. but I never even thought of the. I'm like, who would have thought the concept that I could actually get some continuity? I could somebody could pay me every month. I mean, I think it's a foreign for me. It was a it was a foreign concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It was for me too, Chris. It was a hundred percent for me. And but we used I, to paint it though. It's almost like we're 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 born into okay. You got your electrical oh, yeah. bill. You got your gas bill. You got your phone bill. It's almost like we know what it is. Well, we're used to it going out, Max. You know. So I think you're right, and I think that's really where the whole thing starts is mindset. You know, my my business partner Glenn says, you know, he's been in the mobile home space for thirty seven years, and he's very wise and. um you know, even though we're partners, I look up to him a lot. You need to have those people in your life that you can really look up to that are ahead of you. And he says, you know, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. Yeah. And so it is a mindset set. But, and, you know, people are like, well, you know, I'm not a, you know, what would I even make or what would I, you know, create? It's just you can get mindset. really creative with it. But yeah. just remember yeah. this. If, if you're serving and helping people and they, they need help and service, they're, they're going to be more than glad to, to help you. And, and guys, think of it from this standpoint. I mean, you know, if you went to net, you know, how many people here, give us a, give us a thumbs up. If you're, um, if you're liking this content and, and give us a thumbs up here, if you have a Netflix subscription, just make sure the Q and A is working. Everybody say it's so-and-so I'm from, so I'm from wherever amazing place USA. And yes, I'm one of these Netflix people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to do that. So if you have Netflix right now, think about it. You know, you turn on the TV, you watch a show, maybe you watch a couple shows and then maybe you'll go on a binge and watch like, you know, 10 in one day. Right. Imagine how many shows. So that's scenario one of the opportunity filter. Let's create a, let's create a movie business where people pay a monthly fee and then they get to watch as many movies as they want. Right now, yeah. Let's think about the the impact of having a, an online streaming movie business where every time somebody wants to watch a show, they have to pull out their credit card and type it in to watch the movie. Like how many movies do you think you'd be watching less or more if you had to type in a credit card every time? A lot less, bro. How much? A lot less. less. Like half? No, man. I'm thinking like probably 90% less. I just don't feel yeah. like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I want to empower everybody here. It's sort of a different tangent because that's the way my mind works is that if you're sitting down to Netflix and you're really serious about your real estate business or in your, your entrepreneurial business and kingdom building and all the really cool things that are available out there, you know, if you go and, and you're trying to cut out time wasters, here's a quick one. This is what I do. When I sit down and watch Netflix, I say to myself, okay, if I had to get my credit card out and pay for this right now, would I sit here and watch it? Mm. If the answer is yes, then do it. Have a life. Have <laughs> leisure. It helps your brain recover so you can be stronger at work. It says that in all the books. Okay. But if your answer is no, I wouldn't watch this, then don't. Yeah. <laughs> get on a webinar, get on Chris's channel, go and find out some more knowledge and build your wisdom. It's weird the things we watch at right replay is just killing time. I mean, I'm really I'm trying to exercise my muscle to just read more books. You helped me with that too, Max. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we've got a lot of good book exchange. So this is the book that, um, that I've read that, that is amazing. And I've, I've kind of taken, if you're a big book reader and you love books, awesome. Um, check it out and, you know, get a copy of it. If you're not so much into reading, your time's really pressed. I'm going to send you a tool. If you use the link at the end, um, that's kind of like a, like the summary or the, the biggest highlights of it. And then you can read through that. And it's just like a one pager, and that'll, if anything clicks on there, then you can get the book. So it'll just kind of speed you up a little bit. I'm trying to save <laughs> some time. Nice. We want to talk about what, what's available to everybody. Yeah. Let's do it, Max. Yeah, okay. man. Let's, let's do, do it. it. We're at 45 here's, minutes. Right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Max. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So let's go ahead. We're casual here. It's all good. So here's what, um, here's what we're going to offer to everybody um, today. Chris is going to put a link up whenever is good. The link and is in the video description, my roundupers. I just put it in there. Go ahead, Max. You can just put it below. Cool. Okay, right cool. Below. So, so this is what's in it. I mean, you'll get a link. And um, the first thing that you'll have is uh, these are the tools that we're going to be sharing with you in the upcoming days. The first one is the opportunity filter. So you can download it and start using it. That'll come to you via email. 
Um, the nine ways to add monthly cash flow. We've got that that we're going to send to you. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to get a copy of my new book, um, the Net Profit Workbook. This was like if you found the opportunity filter valuable. And Chris, I'm going to just take this off of the screen share for now, and we'll just go back to me if that's cool. I can do it. Yeah, you're done. Uh, awesome. So hey, what's up? All right. So um, so I'm going to get you a copy of my book, the Net Profit Workbook. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's $97. Uh, we're going to give this to you for free. The only thing that you have to do is just cover the shipping and handling. So we'll be just like, we'll even out zero on that. And then you can get that because I want to uh, reward y'all for coming on and get this tool into your hands. And the opportunity filter is on page 26. It's, right yeah. Yeah. it's got the same questions. It doesn't have the spreadsheet. So you're going to get that. So that'll be really cool. And then there's there's questions that are in here that are segmented out that I hope you get some value for. I do this every year with uh, every one of my businesses. I have three. And every time I learn something new and it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to get you where you need to go. I'll give you a quick 30 second cliff notes. Uh, the book here teaches you how to really create and dial into your finish line. Okay. This is not a long book and it's like a lot of spacing. This is a workbook. This is for you to fill out. This isn't 70,000 words that takes, you know, 20 hours to read that gives you almost no value when you get to the end. You you get to question three. And if you're not seeing this, just let us know and email us. And you know, I can't refund you because you're not paying anything, but I'll send you a different book. But we've never had anybody do that. Okay. So you don't have very much risk there, but get into the book and consume it. Finish line. It helps you plan and figure out really easily where you want to be with, with this next year. Starting line helps you get real on where you really are. Not like what we think is happening, you know, like what's really happening. So in just like four pages, you'll get clarity on that, right? So oh, yeah. very quick to go through this. We go through what your biggest opportunities and risk are. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's where the opportunity filter is. And then how we close out is we, we invest time figuring out what the hurdles are going to be. We plan for hurdles. We plan for obstacles before they happen. So we already see it coming. And people are like, what are you, a Jedi? No. I invested a couple hours at the be, you know, at the end of the year before the year started planning this out. Now you're not going to be able to see every hurdle, but a lot of them you will. And I already have the questions in here. You just have to answer them. So it's plug and play and it goes for every business, uh, but for real estate, that's my background. So that's where you get the most, most value. Cool. And, and, and then um, you create your own playbook. And then the most important part on here, it teaches you how to really have that accountability checklist. So it's not just like, well, if I get this stuff done, cool. If not, no big deal. Why accountability is so important? And the seven questions that you need to ask yourself or more, a better solution would have an accountability partner ask you. And if you don't have an accountability partner, um, this will teach you how to go find one. So that's all that's in there. I guess everything else is kind of a waste. <laughs> I mean, if any of that applies, but I mean... But it, it's three years of, of of everything I had to go through. I didn't have all this stuff. I had to figure all this out on my own. And when I would run straight into the hurdles, I never saw it coming. And so I want I want you guys to leave with this free tool that you can actually use in your business right now. And you can use it in your job. I mean, you don't have to be a full time real estate investor to get value out of it. So and let us know how it goes. We love your feedback. Max, two things I want to ask you first is how important is it, not what is it, was it for you to take, because I feel like when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I got so much going on. My mind is just all this white noise, right? How important was it for you to get it out of your head and onto the paper for you to actually craft your success or create your success? So much more. I mean, you've seen, you guys could go out and do the internet research on what what the probability is of you accomplishing your goals when they're just in your head versus writing them down. It's like a 10x, 100x difference. And so really investing the time to get it out on paper is huge. I mean, guys, a lot of times we have really, really, we have too much in our heads. And so it's really hard to figure out what to focus on. Gotcha. If, if you don't have a routine in your day to be able to capture that, put it somewhere else, then when you're at home, you, you don't want to live in a world if your goal is like, I know everybody on here, like I'm assuming wants to be as successful as possible. Like, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's that's like, if that's your goal, then it's going to be really hard to do that when you're at work 
you're thinking about all the stuff that's going on in your home life. And then when you're at home, you're thinking about all the stuff that's going on at work. So, you know, as you get more and more successful, you know, the tips and the journey is all about having like a way to capture that. So when you wake up in the morning, you know, it's not, you're not thinking about a hundred things. You, you, the things that you would be thinking about, you can let your mind like rest because you know, you've already captured them. You already put them in your, your planner, digital or online. And so when you're doing that, just takes a lot of burden off because you can burn out real easy. Just, you know, keeping everything in your head. Last thing I want to say, Chris, about to answer your question is that your brain actually is not, I've done a lot of research on the brain and how it works. Cause I wanted mine to do the best that I can. You know, I'm not a rocket scientist. I was a, a math teacher. I struggled in school. I had dyslexia. I still do. I mean, it's not like I'm up here, you know, inventing all this stuff. I mean, I, you know, I was just teaching math at a school and, and, but you know, for me, it was, I, I wanted to maximize my potential. And so I'm just like, well, how can I do that? And there's a lot of, you know, we'll come on and do this again. And, but there's a lot of tricks and tools that you can use to be like the best version of yourself, but you can't just go to a seminar and just like say that. And then it like magically happen. Like there's specific things that you can do to put the odds in your favor based on your goals. And there's specific things that you can do that are putting the odds against you. Wow. So do you know what they are and then what choices are you making? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Nice. Roundupers, get your questions answered by the man, Max Keller. Guys, full-time real estate entrepreneur. Actually, I call you an entrepreneur, Max, because you do more than real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, before I get to round up, put your questions in a box over there for Max. As I'm aging in my entrepreneurial walk, I'm noticing that the most successful real estate investors, the most that the ones that I'm meeting don't just do real estate, Max. What's your opinion on that? I agree. I think it's a progression. I think it's important to... Uh, Real estate can be like the ultimate goal, um, but it can also be like, you know, a stepping stone to something else. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's so much pressure, you know, on people to have like an identity and protect yeah. a certain identity. And a lot of pressure, Max. that's wow. garbage. Like you need to, you need to just do the best that you can and you're going to see new opportunities. Hopefully you'll be seeing using the opportunity filter. You're going to see a lot more opportunities. And there's nothing wrong with pivoting. And, and I do like ideas. I like the word synergy. It's not just like a 90s corporate buzzword. It's real. And it's all about, you know, learning something, really mastering something, and then doing something that's complementary. So I, I would never want to have like three businesses, you know, they're all very different. But, you know, I have my, my EXP. Uh, so I have my, my mobile home investing. So my, my investing work and what I'm doing in investing active, but mostly passive is in that space. I really like it. And, and that was a progression because I started out like everybody else. I was bird dogging. Then I was wholesaling. Then I was fix and flip. Then I got some rentals. Then I did seller finance. Then I started lending out of my IRA. And then I started, um, you know, doing different asset classes. So it's like there's nothing wrong with that. And, um, I agree with what you're saying. I would caution folks from my own personal experience, that when you try to do something that's really, really different and it's not even related, you sort of don't get to capitalize on all that effort you put in earlier. So like I put a lot of effort early in my career to building my yeah. real estate skills. Me too. 99% of them transferred to mobile homes. And so that's, that was an easy pivot. You know, I've, I've, invest, like I've invested a lot of time in, um, in, you know, the writing books. I mean, that was natural because I was the teacher. So Find what you're already good at, get into something, use the filter, and then you can um, you know, branch out after you've gotten some kind of like baseline. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks, Max. Daniel Barry, thank you so much for your love offering, my friend. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us, Daniel. Lakeisha Williamson, hey, how can you create recurring? Where are you at, Lakeisha? How do you create recurring revenue in the STR business? This is, is single family resident? What is STR? STR. Lakeisha, what is, uh, I think she might have put F SFR, maybe single family residential business. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. I can answer that from personal experience, if that's okay. Yeah. So, so, what we're doing with our mobile home investing company is that we're choosing to, um, we're choosing to do, we built a property uh, management company. 
And so we're selling turnkey properties. And so we get a one-time fee when we sell a property that's turnkey, it's ready to go. We're selling it to an investor. We already put a renter into it, but we're doing the property management. So, you know, every month we have a number of doors that we manage. So that could be like the next progression is like, let's say for instance, you are wholesaling to um, let's say you were doing wholesaling, single family residential, and you're wholesaling to a lot of landlords. I've wholesaled to a lot of local landlords in my area. Some of them do their own property management, but sometimes it's just because, you know, they can't find anybody else to do it and they've been burned. So could you learn that property management skill and build out a couple of people to help you, you know, you at first, and then every month you have, you know, eight to 10% of the rent that you collect coming in every month. That could be one way. Now that's sure. a little bit active, but you can do even more from that. So what kind of services could you offer to the tenants that you're placing she got she chimed in she said uh short term str short term rentals max i'm sorry no problem it's the same pivot just here's here's the framework that you use every time it doesn't matter what business is these are the questions it's very simple you say okay who are my customers right now that's question number one and then you say what do my customers need that i'm not currently providing them okay and then what, how could I, how could I offer that? What would that product or service look like? That's three. Okay. So it's very simple. Who are my customers right now? How are they spending money? That's not with me right now. What product or service could I offer them? And then, and then you use the, the nine different ways blueprint that we're going to send you. And you take one of those nine ways and you figure out how to position that product or service into a monthly recurring revenue model. I I, that's great, man. I'm going to write that as, I need to add that as a page to the book. I just wrote it down. So I'm like, Will you send it to me. <laughs> you know, where my mentor used to say this all the time, Lonnie Scruggs. He's like, you need to find out a way. He had a lot of mobile here. He owned mobile home parks. Oh yeah. Then he would just, I've heard it. of him. He's amazing. Huh? Yeah. I've heard of him and he's, everybody speaks really highly of him. He was like, Chris, you need to find out a way to finance your tenants. I don't care if you're financing a TV, a car, whatever it is. He would finance right. everything. To pay. But let's do it right now. You ready? Let's do it right now. Oh, okay, yeah. so short term um, rentals, right? So are we talking like Airbnb? Is that what we're talking okay. about? Yep. Okay. So somebody shows up on vacation, right? Okay. Or they're showing up. So we're like, hey, who are our customers? Why are they picking our house? How are they going to be investing money with us while they're at their stay? Is there something that we can offer them that carries over like a benefit if they rent with other people? But here's the bottom line. Let's just make it simple. When somebody rents from you short-term rental and then they go to the gas station and then they go to the grocery store, it's the same person. Same so person. sometimes you got to take a step back and stop thinking short-term rentals. Don't worry about that. Are you capturing that person's information? Are you getting, are you building a list of people that have stayed with you and have a relationship with you wow. and then figure out what's the next step in that relationship? Um, right. You'll find out what they're, but it's all based on their needs. Gotcha. Um, one right. idea is like, what if they were like a business traveler and they were and a lot of your short-term residential, short-term rental customers were business travelers, Right. Is there some kind of you know membership program that you could offer them that would give them access to um, big time like travel discounts and they would pay to be in your club and you could maybe bring somebody on to teach them how to get their their status from like you know just regular travel status to like really high status and get more like frequent rewards and stuff and could you have an expert in that area help create that information? And then you guys could um, partner on that together and then people would pay a membership and you could split the fee. Membership. Like that's one of a billion examples. You know, it's weird everywhere I go, everybody's trying to get me into some type of membership, Max. I don't care if it's the gym, food, lion, farm, I mean, grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to capture my information. Mm -hmm. They want to get me. So, so yeah, so that's definitely one, you know, one of many ways, but um you know, I just, I think, I think about, like I said, that, and if you read that, that blueprint, if you click the link um, and you, and you get into the everything and get all the tools that'll be coming 
and just look at it and think, okay, who are my, who are my renters? And then what, what is it that they need? And then which one of these fits? And if you do that, you can't fail. Hey, Justin, my Bible buddy, Proverbs 18, two, I think that's what we did last time. Mm, I don't remember which one. Yeah, but he- 18 two. I, I had it. I had it bookmarked that J- just is my Bible buddy. Chris, good to see you again. Um, good to see you. Wow. Hold on, hold on. Just oh, some hold people in his house. Wow. My boy, Jared. Oh yeah. Make it easy. I think somebody said, uh, somebody said that Netflix and Hulu would never work. Yeah. That's the other thing, guys. <laughs> a lot of these people say like stuff will never work. Here's, let me, let me give you all a little knowledge bomb if while we're waiting for questions. Oh, thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that very much. Wealth and wellness. Thanks a million. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What does this say? Hey, Max, how do I build out my overall financial goals and cash flow goals? How do you map out your plans and goals to get where you are today? And that, don't forget, Max has a big old family too. Yeah, six kids. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, you know, it's so funny, Chris. I'll answer that question. Everybody said, you know, kids are expensive. Kids are expensive. And I just kind of ignored them. I just, I, I love being open to life and, and it's been a blessing. It's very hard. My wife and I are good at parenting. We were junior high teachers. So it's like, you know, kind of a gift. I mean, I'm not so good yeah. with the high school. You I'll be honest. Deal with junior high, dog. Uh, junior high is my favorite. Those kids are silly. They're hilarious. They don't pee their pants. You guys, you have some training. We don't have any training, Max. We just. It's a big struggle for people who don't. But I struggle with high school and older, you know. So like I said, I don't have it all figured out. But junior high will be easy. But people go, oh, kids are so expensive. And I was just like, I don't know. I think maybe just spoiling your kids too much. Now that my oldest is 13 and there it's the braces and all the medical stuff, I'm like, it's really adding up. And some days I feel like I have to net a million just to break even. And we live in just a normal house and I drive a nice car, but it's like, it's a $20,000 car. I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's not like I'm not into all that and I'm cool with anybody who is, I'm just saying like, we don't even spend crazy. It starts coming in. So you're right about that. But you know what? I like making money, Chris. I like making money because I've always liked making money. It's just been in my DNA. And for me, it's more of a personal challenge. I'm, we were happy when I was just making teacher money. I, I am glad I'm making more now, a lot more. But to answer this question, when you go through financial goals and build them out, um, there's obviously, I mean, some stuff in here on the workbook that'll help you when you're creating your finish line. They have like very specific questions. But how I did it was I um, I thought about, actually, we just went through this with one of my coaches. We created um, a plan of like, of where I want to be in my life at the very end of it. Hmm. And, and, you know, and then really not so, it's so hard. Setting goals is really hard. I think it was hard for me because I grew up in a really, just really scarcity minded, you know, mindset family, just like a lot of people. I'm not dissing my family. I love them, but you know, they just, it just, they didn't think like, you know, the world is your oyster and you can do whatever you want. So I think that's like step one. And then step two is, is obviously figure out what you need every month to cover, you know, your living expenses. And then think about what you would like to have extra. A rule of thumb for me is I want to be able to save 50% of my income minimum. You know, what's weird? All rich people, they, they spend less. (laughs) This is where I got it from. They live on, I'm my boys like, dude, you need to live on 30% of what you make. And I'm looking, I'm like, we do that. I'm like, we do that. We do (laughs) I mean, I've I've been in like seven masterminds in the last four years. I'm in four right now. Mm -hmm. And it's been a blessing to be able to be a part of those and obviously have the resources. And I know not everybody does. So like, I want to share with you what I found out. Like I had a conversation with a gentleman, very well-known person. Like if I said his name, you would know him, is very, very big in some um, major asset classes. His family's been in a long time, multi-generational wealth people. And I saw him at the end of our event, this, you know, he spoke at the mastermind and I was like, Hey, let me ask you a question. You know, I'm starting to come up. My, my income's going way up and it sounds like yours has been like amazing for a long time. I was wondering like how much, what percent of your income do you save? And he was like 50%. And I kept hearing that over and over my friend who runs like a small hedge fund, 50%, my friend whose uh, uh, families own a bunch of banks, um, but see, like none of these people were my friends when I was a teacher, guys. Okay. You create value in yourself. You pour into yourself. People will start noticing. And if you share that knowledge with other people and you help other people, you're going to start being able to, you know, connect with some really, really dialed in people. And that 
and so that for me, that was the 50%. And then I just figured out how much I wanted to live on. And then I knew that that was my minimum. And then I was like, okay, well now how much can I give away? And so for me, that's, that's kind of how it all happened. It's like 25. My, my ultimate goal is I have this very big number every month that I want to make and I'm going to live on 25%. And, um, and, you know, I'm going to save 50% and then I'm going to give away 25% and, and goals change too. Don't, you know, like it's, it's very hard to predict like 10 years from now, um, but, but you can set them, but just start with that. But just do not just make your goal, like, you know, whatever it is that you need to live on plus a little more, because usually the way goals work is that when you reach them, you know, it, you kind of stop until you get the next plan, go watch the Olympics. They go, you just won the gold medal. What are you going to do now? And they're like, well, I've envisioned this moment for like the last four years. You have to visualize. Okay. If you don't have a vision board, talk about it. Maybe we'll do that on a future episode. I'll show you my vision board. I mean, it's kind of personal, but I mean, as long as you just keep it between us, but you know, the vision board is key, but they're like, well, I've been visualizing it. I've been training it and I am excited and I'm going to enjoy this till like, you know, for tonight this is the gold medal. And then tomorrow I'm going to come up with some new goals and come up with my plan. Nice. Bernard, good question. Don't shit. Don't forget roundup family. Go to the link below. Max is going to give you his workbook so you can set up your, hopefully set up your next cash flow income. Tanya McCandles. Hey, Tanya, thank you for your love offering. Thank you. You got any questions? I'll stay on as long as you need me to stay on till. And then when the questions stop, then, you know, we won't need to be here. Bernard, hi. What should I? Oh, he, we did that one already. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're good. Uh, still in the learning phases. Let's see. Danny. And that link, I only see the books. Were well, the other offers be in that link yeah yes yes absolutely it was just too hard to put everything on one page so all you have to do when you get the link is just click on it you'll put your info in there i i like to email people things because when they just email me and they say send it to me you know i forget i have an assistant but that i I set it up so it happens automatically the more things you can set up automatically like recurring revenue uh the better off you'll be so that's how we have it set up so you just go on that page you can put your info in there, hit yes, and then it'll take you to the next page where you can get the net profit workbook. You just put in your info, free plus shipping, and then yeah. uh, we'll send it to you. And then there's some other stuff there that you can look at. And if you're, and if any of that stuff is what you've been looking for, great. And then, um, but if not, that's okay too. Our mission today is to get you these tools, and um, and that's um, it's a pretty quick and easy portal to do that. But uh, Bernard Mack wants to know which one of, the, of your books walks through the the walks through these financial goals and planning process, Max. Uh, of the books that I've written, the one that that uh, focuses on that core concept the most is the Net Profit Workbook. Of other books that I've read, um, you know, a few come to mind. Uh, your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt is a really good book. I bought his Full Focus Planner, and I the most valuable thing about that wasn't the planner but it was learning how to use it. That's when I, my whole life really started to change. I became a lot more purposeful with my time and my goals. And what was really cool about this is um, they, when I got the full focus planner, you know, no affiliate, no affiliation. I'm just, I just, I just use them. I like them is uh, what was cool about that was that came with like 12 videos that Michael Hyatt did. And he really taught me how to set up these goals. And then I have some you know, other mentors and coaches that have helped me do that too. It's kind of a tweaking process, but that's a good place. This book will help you a little bit. And then that other book is a good place to start too. So they, they kind of go hand in hand. This is sort of like a little bit more on like your business and your business goals. And then your best year ever is a little bit more like on personal stuff. I'm not as good at personal planning. I'm still, I'm still working on that. So I can't, I can't give advice in that area. Self-awareness is just very tough. Stephanie, hey, hey, Shaw. How does long-term how does long-term strategies fit into your opportunity evaluation matrix? For example, some decisions he made today will be more beneficial for his son, wow, rather than him building his generational wealth. Wow. That's a great question. You know, I'm not sure. Let me look at the filter and see which one challenges that. But if not, then that might be something that we add. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. So I think that. 
I think it would be the first one, make more money because it's not so much right now, but it's you're factoring in over time. But that legacy piece is really, really key. And yeah. so um, I really like that feedback. And that's so probably not something I think about enough too. I mean, I do think it did talk about the taxation and long and short term, but but that's a really, really good point. That's that's hey, really I'm nice. thinking real big, long term. We're trying to get them. He's on another level too. Tanya, what would you say the biggest mistake you made and what did you learn from from it now that you're contribute that's contributing to your success? You know, it's just so hard to pick one. And I think yeah. I mean it's really hard. Um gosh, I just don't even know. I just I would just think of one. What would you say is my biggest mistake I've made and what did I learn from it now? The biggest mistake I made was not reading the Bible sooner. I made a big mistake there. I was reading business books. I thought that if I wanted to fix any business problem I had, there was a business book. And then I forgot and I didn't really even know like Proverbs is probably the best business book and principles that are there. I mean, it, it's like it's principle based. It's not going to change. So I should have done that sooner. Um, I didn't learn how to hire very well. Um, and that was a mistake. Um, oh, what else? It's a skill you got to learn. No one, I don't think anybody's born learning how to hire people. No, no. Some people just, I don't know, seem to be better at it. But it's a, it's a thing a lot of people struggle with is like duplicating themselves. Um, I don't know. Honestly, like I'm really happy with a lot of the mistakes because they that's how you get feedback. So you kind of need some of those. Um, you know, I'm happy with, I'm really happy with the way my life's turned out so far. So I wouldn't change anything. But reading uh, sooner would have been huge. Yeah, me too. Uh, like reading is reading is a superpower. Round up down below. Make sure you download Max's free book. Matter of fact, you're gonna mail him the book. You, that, it's not even. Yeah, a- I, you know what? I'm just. I'm sorry, guys. Full disclosure. I'm not Mr. Technology. I'm more of a thinker, and I'm. I'm good Thank at making money, and I'm good at hiring technology people. But maybe. But I like. I like the physical copy for what we said earlier, guys. See, when this book comes to you, yeah, my assistant Kate's gonna mail it to you. Um, all you do is just cover the shipping and handling. So we just cover the stamps.com label, but no, we're going to send this to you. It's going to be on your coffee table because here's the deal guys, this is important stuff. And I'm trying to change lives with this, you know, 10,000 lives. And the bottom line is, is that if this is, if this is on your coffee table, which mm-hmm. is my goal, I don't know how many other books it's competing with, but probably not a thousand. But if I send you the ebook and, um, and it's competing in your inbox, I mean, how many emails do you have right now? hundred. I don't want, you know, that it'd be hard to do an opportunity filter for a hundred things. And that's the problem. Stuff's coming into your email box right now. That's millions of dollars of opportunities. It's just, you don't see them because they're all cluttered. So we have to declutter. So I found that books are a really good way to declutter because you're not on your device. You're not getting distracted. And then when you write them down, your goals happen. So that's why we've chosen to do this framework. It takes longer to get them out to people, but this only works if you consume it. And I know that if you consume it, you go from the front to the back, you go through these questions for two hours, you're going to call and be very happy. And you're going to, you're going to get results. The magic word is results. When somebody's offering you something, the number one thing you should be thinking about is, will this get me results? Nice. And if it's just talk, just to talk, I mean, we could do that in the coffee shop about your favorite sports team. But if you're trying to get results, you have to do things that get results. And, you know, it takes work. I mean, I'm not, I'm not up here. I hate those people. I don't hate people. I hate the, the strat the, the phrases that come out that mislead people about, you know, oh, this is just so easy and you don't have to do any work. You know, that mindset of always looking for the easiest thing has gotten you to where you are now. Nobody I know who's doing well does that. All right, we got to keep moving. Mike James wants to know, do you have a, something he can do to put, to put averages in his favor? I don't know that one. Yeah, I mean, I like, well, you know, yeah. So, I mean, you can look at things analytically and statistics and use data when you're coming up with your, um, you know, when you're coming up with your decision-making model and criteria. And we, we take an average of the 10 scores on that opportunity filter. So we're putting that into action right now. Gotcha. But yeah, best practices. Mm-hmm. Chris, hey, Monroe, he wants to know, what are your thoughts on using virtual assistants and do you use them? Good, yes. I will say this. So I like them, yes. They're usually the best for repeatable functions that are not customer facing. I made a mistake and had a lot of virtual assistants that were in really customer facing uh, positions. 
I misidentified like how valuable different parts of my checklist were. And so when you do that, that can be a mistake. Um, so don't, so yes, but don't, the, one of the biggest opportunities in mankind is virtual assistants in America. Not saying that virtual assistants aren't in America, but normally people are thinking like other countries. Sometimes there's a language barrier. I've had up to five at one time from the Philippines and they're great and they're happy. They're making, remember $5 an hour is five times the minimum wage in the Philippines. Okay. <laughs> So they're good, but um, just be careful. And also my mistake that I made that I fixed was I just sort of like threw them into stuff and I didn't really give them like a lot of training. And so how I changed yeah. that was I gave them checklists they could plug into and I did a like a instructional video for each thing. Nice. And you still have to like inspect their work too. You can't just assume because you don't pay somebody a lot or they're not doing the most valuable activities that they're just going to do it automatically. So you still have to have that management piece in there if you want to actually get results. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting uh, time mostly, but especially money. Jay Black says this is awesome information and wisdom. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And is there a mentoring program for those who are at this level of expanding, Max? Oh, what do we mean by that? For you, you offer... Oh. Maybe. Okay. So I only have two and I don't do a lot of it because time is, it's just really hard and everything has to be in a group setting. So I found the best way that I can serve my audience is go, being in all these masterminds and then distilling the data down and putting that content out. But if, when you go through the, the link that we have today, the first step is a email so we can send you the tools. They'll come over the next um, couple of days. You'll sprinkle them in. And then after you download and order the net profit workbook, um, there'll be an opportunity to um, to take this class that I created. And so that's on there. You can learn about it. And if it's for you, great. And then on the next page, I have an inner circle that just meets um, once a month. And it's kind of, kind of like this, but it, we go a little bit deeper and it's a little bit more on the accountability side. And so if that's something that's interesting you, yes, but that's the only thing that I offer. And I don't actually know how much longer I'll be offering it. I'll keep it open as long as I have members. I have people on that call, but um, time is just getting so stretched. It's really, really difficult. Also, um, some folks um, who have a real estate license, they want to join uh, my EXP team and that's really powerful. So if you don't know about that, you know, we can talk about that down the road. So there's a few, not many, I'm real selective, but, and I'm of, of everything because of the opportunity filter. But if I can serve you, I will. And if not, I'll point you in the right direction because I know a lot of people too. And I'm sure Chris does also. One more question. I got to go get my little girl, Justin. What's your thoughts on education, education and teaching others how to get started in REI? Also leveraging relationships to refer to and add to others looking to get started. Good question. Great. I see a lot of people who I always think of the risk and the, and the hurdles and the obstacles first, just because I want to allocate time to them. So number one, I think it's great. I think it's key. You know, we can't give somebody something we don't have. So it's crucial to be the person with that knowledge base because, you know, when pe you're teaching people, I think of it as like life or death. I feel like I'm, I'm putting, I don't know the right way to say it. Like they're, they're putting their lives in my hands or something like that. Right. Because if you teach somebody the wrong things, you can mess up somebody's life. That's right. Just make in the, you know, I've been studying really successful people. It's a good model. It's, it's great to do. Um, make sure it's something that you or the people in your, you know, membership platform have true mastery of with results, not theoretical. Um, one of the most important things you can do, I think, in business is what Charlie Munger does, Warren Buffett's business partner. He identifies what he's really competent at. He identifies what he calls the, the edge of that competency. And then anytime something is beyond that edge, he very, very forcibly says, that's really beyond the edge of my competency. And he introduces people to folks who have that competency. So focus on what you've mastered and what people in your portal have mastered. And uh, if anybody asks for something outside of that, then um, you're, you're gonna serve them and you a lot better if you point them to somebody who's an expert in that than trying to be jack of all trades, Swiss army knife. I see people go down that road and it really hurts them. And so it's hard because you want if you wanna help people and you know about it and you want to make income for your family. I get it. But in the long term, like the other question we had, what's the best long term strategy? Finding out what you can really deliver the best at and then um, and then focusing on that. 
Wonder Woods, you know, uh, make sure round up family. You're just getting him a real estate homies. Max is giving away his book right below in the video description. It's not in the it's not on the screen. It's going to be in the video description below. Wendell Woods, when did you learn to pivot to your next opportunity? Does the book teach that as well? Pivoting is just so crucial. I think I think we get in trouble when we don't pivot. I get asked that question a lot and um, by a lot of really successful people. That is something that I am good at. And I think the reason is, is because I'm always thinking about, I'm, I'm observant. So I think to pivot, you have to be observant. You have to really get real with what's happening in the current state and kind of start seeing like the writing on the wall. And um, I think some of that is just personality. And then some of it is just purposely thinking about that and be like, okay, you know, this is going good right now, but what, what's, what could be changing down the road? And, you know, you always want to, you always want to be like in hockey. You don't want to be where the puck is or where it's been. You want to be where the puck is going. Okay. Right. Soccer, basketball, right? I used to be a basketball coach and that was my favorite, even though I had to tell everybody football was my favorite because we're in Texas and it's, you know, high school football and everybody's all about football, but I like basketball. So if, if you guys, if you guys are my basketball homies, hook me up because basketball is so cool. The reason I loved it is because it was more strategic. And, you know, how many times are we watching basketball and a team that maybe has one really good player, one pretty good player, and then some role players, right? Beat a team that they should not have beat. Did you see that upset of uh, Stephen F. Austin and Duke this year? I didn't. Oh, yeah. It was, um, it was the biggest upset like of all time ever. And that's what was so cool about basketball. And that's what I feel like is so cool about real estate and life is you could literally be the underdog for many, many years. And if you get plugged into the right system, you could literally change. I mean, my whole life, I mean, I, I sleep in a hyperbaric chamber. Like, I, my whole life is, I mean, just the people I've met and the countries I've gotten to be at. And four years ago today, I was buying my first house. And it's actually, this is the anniversary. Four years today, I filled out my first motivated seller contract of a house down here in Arlington. So things can happen really, really fast. Ah, good question. I don't give that out very much, Jason. Jason. Oh, no, Jason. I can't do it. The but, email. Uh, it's linked below. It's in the video description. It's, Jason. it's in there. Todd, what do you look for in a mentee and how many mentors should one have? Oh, great test. It depends on what your goals are. I mean, for me, I want to work with the fewer betters. And I'm not saying it like an elitist way. It's like a motivation way. Like people who are really hungry and want to do things, not just like talk about things. Like it breaks my heart if somebody buys something that I've created to serve people and they don't do anything with it. Like I made money. But that's only half of my goal. Yeah. I'm, not on, I'm not living just to make money. I'm living to do a lot of other things too. And so um, you have to be really selective. Depends on what your goal is. The best one I found is give somebody a book to read and then tell them what the next book is. And if they want to, um, if they want to um, get to the next book or the next level, they have to read the first book. And not, unfortunately, I don't know why because I don't know everything. Obviously, I barely know anything, but. But nine times out of 10, unfortunately, you'll never hear back from them. And if you you can only pour into so many people. So pour into people who are willing to put in the hard work and you'll they'll get a lot more results. And then they can go out into the community and get results, too. And your efforts is really going to help and I think save a lot of people because there's people who need saving right now. James Funk, how do you market to your landlord buyers list? I'm presuming you know what that is. Unfortunately, I don't have um, a magic format for you where I live in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, the market is so hot that I have a list of like about five people and I've never gotten to the second person. The first person buys every house I have. I know not every market is like that. And so, um, but in my experience, it's just been really, it's been fairly simple. If it wasn't simple and I was wholesaling, um, then in like on our mobile home stuff, we're starting to wholesale more. And so, to investors or to buyer, to owner occupants? Let me put it to you like this. Check this out, people. You got two things that you can get better at. Communicating and building a big list or buying discounts at a deeper discount and being and getting better at marketing and learning how to buy more valuable properties. Which one of those do you think is the most valuable tool? 
in your arsenal to get to a big wholesaling business. See, so many people focus on the list and having a bigger list. Trust me, if you invest that same amount of time having better properties that have more value and sitting and thinking about how to create more valuable properties, the list will take care of itself. Yeah, it will. So it's like, but you only have two things to invest in. So sorry, I know other people who um, do more of, of that and it's just not something I have expertise in. Lakeisha, I'm a nurse and I enjoy helping seniors as well. What are your thoughts on investing in assistant living facilities? Yep. Would you recommend I start learning about such a business? Okay. Can I go, can I leave real quick and grab something? It's right there. Yeah, go. Okay. So let me show you. Joining us. Here's what I would like to do. I would like to, so this is something that I know a lot about. Okay. Not big box, but I have. So here's the thing. We didn't even get to talk about this, but I have a book. You can get it on Amazon, but if you send me an email, only for the people who go through the process here, I'll, I'll have Kate send you a copy of this book. This is Home to Home, the step-by-step -step senior housing guide. And in it, we talk about the different types of facilities and all that. So first of all, you're a nurse. Amazing. My mom's a nurse, so I love that. And then helping seniors is amazing. Investing in assisted living facilities is unbelievable. OK, I'm personally doing that with my IRA money. I have licensees. About half of my licensees are doing residential assisted living. Uh, Gene Garino and his company are amazing at that. So you can check those resources out. They have like free videos. But residential assisted living is amazing. And um, there's challenges to every business. But there's a big need for, you know, these services. And um, there's some really great books out about it. And uh, you should definitely investigate it as part of your opportunity filter. Thank you so much, Max Keller. Go to the link below, get Max's free book. It's going to help you set up. As a matter of fact, those questions are just beasts. Max, final thoughts for people that are looking to actually put push it to the max for 2020. And right, matter of fact, right now, I'm like, I don't want to wait to 2020. I want to do it right now. Yeah, take a couple of days and some tools and resources and really sit down with somebody you know, like, and trust that has the skill, the workbook, and really plan out the next year. And if you plan out the next year, you go through the questions that are in here, um, you're going to put the odds in your favor astronomically. It's gonna help with averages. I mean, it's gonna make a huge, huge difference at just having that plan really mapped out. Then it's just all about being accountable to the results, driving the results, and then pivoting with when your tactics aren't working. Nice, uh oh. What happened? And I'm just trying to, each folder is limited to 25. Hold on. I'm trying to put my little banner. Round up his, the book, the link's below. Okay, Max, I'm just honored to have you, my friend. You wrote the book. I mean, just the, the questions to me. I love it when I can look at a piece of paper. It's almost like I'm bound by these four walls here. Mm -hmm. the questions there. This is it, period. Focus on this one thing. And then when we went over together, I'm like, okay, those are really simple questions. They're short, boom, 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 one through 10, add it up, helps me to kind of guide me where I needed to be. Whether, I mean, for me, real estate's big for me, internet's big, and media. So I have to figure out which, how am I going to incorporate that? Am I going to pump the gas a little bit here? Am I going to do breaks over there? Man, it really helped me out. And I want to thank you for sharing it with me, my friend. My pleasure. So I'm a little long-winded. I'm excited. You can fortunately get the um get the tools and you know and get access to that without without me um you know having to go in long answers. And you know, I just I just want to serve everybody at the highest level. I appreciate everybody who came on and um you know, I'm you know, hopefully we'll do it again in the future and uh you know, blessings to everybody. But yeah, click on the link. I don't think it's gonna be up forever and and obviously we can't send out, um, there's a limit to how many books we can send out, you know, free because there's just a lot of time involved in that, obviously. So just, you know, act now and um, and click on that. We'll send it to you. And then we want to hear your feedback of how it worked. And, you know, we want to hear how you got results. Nice. Let me see. There it is. Finally got it up on there. Thing wasn't working. Okay. Roundup family, make, you, make sure you subscribe. Like the content, and next week we got my boy Bill Brunchick coming on. He's got a Christmas special for you. OM Jesus. Subject to attorney, lease option attorney, owner financing attorney, land trust attorney. I mean, the man has put all this. He's helped me set my whole thing up. Monday, 2 o'clock.
he's going to reveal his uh, Christmas special. I think he's going to do 50% off of everything. If you want to check out what he has, just go to chrishaskins.com as well. Max, I'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, yep. everybody. Round up. Peace.